Hello, guys. Um, I wish to select some questions from homework number seven. Um, and show you how to do it. I'm sure you, you know, you guys have completed your homework or on your way to complete homework. Some of these contents will be covered by the exam, uh, the upcoming uh, midterm exam. And uh, so here we go. We are, uh, you know, the first set of question I wish to go over with you is that as we talk about that derivative at a point, okay, um, is the slope of the tangent line, the curve of the function, right? So since we know the, the curve, so let me write it down. If the derivative exists, right? So suppose that um, if, the derivative of a function exists at a point exists, okay? It is, is the slope of tangent line, tangent line at the point, at the point, what the point? The point is a, f of a, on the curve of F, okay? So we're gonna illustrate this uh, by some examples, okay? So take number seven, for example, this, the first set of question, right? So we have seven, number seven here. Okay, maybe I just call it example number one, okay? Example number one. So what do we want to do here is that we're, we're, the, we're to find, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve, to the curve at the point, at the given point. Okay, the given point here, of course, for this function we have y equals to square root of x. The point, okay, the point is one comma one. We are pretty familiar with this, with this curve, okay, which is the square root of x. Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you what it means. So this curve, okay, this is a curve. And there's a point. There's a point on the curve, which is one comma one, input one, output one. So there's a point on this curve, okay? I'm gonna make it a red dot. And on this point, right, at this point, there's a tangent line. There's a tangent line. And this tangent line, Tangent line is a line that crosses the curve at only one point, at only one point. Okay, my drawing, please forgive my drawing. This is suppose only the one, the, the straight line touches the curve at only one place. Okay, so let me do it again. So hopefully I will do a better job. So this is the tangent line. Okay, this is the tangent line. It touches the curve at only one point. There, this is better. So this is the tangent line. And this tangent line has a slope, okay? The slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line, we call it M, right? Slope of the tangent line, okay, M. M is going to be the same as the derivative of the function at one, one x equals to one. If this derivative exists, if derivative exists, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do, okay? So this is the 
uh, this is this is about the the narrative. This is about the narrative. So, so next we're gonna do a sequence of um, you know uh, calculations. So, how do we find the derivative of f at point one? Right. Well, that's by definition of a derivative. Derivative if at the point A, at the point, right, at point A, and here A equals one, right, they're both ones, so the, the input is one, okay? It is defined as limit limit as A to between zero, we now have two forms, but we, we're gonna use the preferred form, okay? So it's the f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And of course, in our case, a is one. A is one, okay? So we're gonna, if this limit exists, okay, if this exists, If this limit exists, then the limit of this expression is going to be m, which is the slope of the tangent line passing that point. That will be the case. Okay, so we'll, be, we'll, we'll find the slope. All right, let's do the calculation. Let's do the calculation. So first we're going to assess if this limit exists, okay? To assess this limit exists, we know the function is f of x equals to f of x, okay? And uh, that's the square root of x, right? So now we will get the limit f of one plus h, that's one plus h minus square root of one divided by h. Continue to reduce it. Okay, so I'm gonna, let me make the funds larger. Okay, the square root of one is one. Okay, so this is equals to one. And apparently we are in a situation that as h approaching zero, the top approaching zero, denominator approaching zero, we have approaching zero divided by approaching zero situation. So um, we're gonna have to do something before we can apply any law. So that's something we're gonna do is finding the conjugates. Okay, so the conjugate of root one plus h minus one is root one plus h plus one. And then we're gonna use the, um, you know, the property of conjugates. So we're gonna multiply the numerator with numerator, then we get a, we get this uh, squared minus one squared. Of course, my one squared is one and this denominator multiply h. So we need to insert a parentheses. So we got that part. And then the top now is top and bottom are both transformed by principle number one. And this part equals to one plus h. One squared is one. Denominator, we just keep it as is, so we get one minus one is zero. So we have H on the top and H and H will be reduced. Okay, so this is one and this H is no, is no more. And now we have a situation when H approaches zero, we can do direct substitution because the denominator will not be zero. So in the end, we get one over root 
direct substitution, this is zero, so is we're gonna get a one half. And this tell us the slope of the tangent line here is one half. Okay, so I'm bringing down the curve here. Okay, so the slope is found and we know the point, the point is one comma one, right? So the slope of the tangent line is the derivative of the function at one and that equals to half, okay? And the tangent line equation can be written as a point slope formula. So y minus f of one equals to slope multiply x minus one, right? Because the point, the slope is half, the point is, the point is one comma one. And we just put numbers in place, right? One half is substituted by uh, one half substitute M, F of one equals to one, right? So we, we're, we nearly got the equation. So almost there, adding one on both sides. So we get one half X, okay? Minus half, minus half plus one. Okay, because we add a one on both sides. So in the end, we get half X plus half. Because negative one, a negative half plus one is a positive half. So the tangent line equation is Y equals to half, half of X plus so now we can draw this line just to see for ourselves, right? So this time we can draw this uh, uh, precisely, right? Tangent line there. So see, that's the that's the tangent line, okay? And so that's how you do this kind of uh, questions. There's a number. There are four questions, and the second set is to find the derivative only at a point and to find the derivative by definition. Okay, so I'm going to choose one or two questions here. Okay, so example number two, we're just going to find the derivative of the function at a given point A, at a given point A, okay? And A is not really given. A is not really given. So we just pretend there's A, right? There's A. Uh, take number 35, for example, right? This is my example. So I have F of X equals to root of one minus two X. Okay? Then we're gonna we're gonna go by the definition to find the derivative of the function at a. So as x h approaching zero uh, limit, okay, which is f of a plus a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Okay. Now we're gonna find f of a plus h, right? So f of a, x replaced by a, f of a plus h, right? a plus h, and this x will be replaced by a plus h, right? Direct, it's just a plug-in, equals to, right, so we got, and we're gonna substitute the function in place, right? So f of a plus h, replacing that part. f of a right here. We we'll get that situation, we get into that situation again because as h approaching zero, numerator approaching zero, denominator approaching zero, right? We cannot use any law, limit laws, we'll have to reduce it, 
We have to reduce it. And how do we reduce it? Well, principle number one, right? So here, if you wish, you can do minus 2a minus 2h if you want. So minus 2a minus 2h, okay? So we're gonna multiply the conjugate. This is, this is like almost a common practice, right? So when we have a similar situation, we will try that algebraically. So we find the conjugate of the numerator and, um, and we make a one, right? And then we will um, work with the conjugates. Denominator times the denominator. So this will be left with one, multiply, right? Numerator times numerator, that's a minus b times a plus b. So that's gonna be squared and that's gonna be squared. Uh, we can remove the, that, the other thing entirely so now that equal sign stand. The next step, we are going to simplify. So that P simplified will be left with that and this. But be careful, we need to insert a parenthesis. If we don't insert that parenthesis, right? we will have to do minus one plus two a. Okay, so let's do minus one plus two a. Okay, and next step, we have simplified. We are going to simplify. So negative, a positive two a and negative two a will reduce, one and one reduce. So we will be left with negative two h, one minus, uh, 2a, negative one plus 2a. So this is going to be reduced to such an h and h in the denominator is reduced. So we have a negative two. So this h is gone, reduced, and that's negative two. Now we can take limit because now if we replace h by zero, it's not going to cost any zero denominator, right? Um, now we can do direct substitution. So what we get is negative two and in the denominator, H will be replaced by zero because we can do direct substitution, multiply by zero here. So, and this is just be left with, oops. We just be left with, um, two of the square root, right? And that's gonna be two times, two times. Furthermore, two and two can be reduced. So in the end, wait, in the end, we will have negative, negative one over root of one minus two a, you can bring the negative sign to the front and that will be the final answer. So for this question, and that's it, that's done. Okay, another question I would, I can go with you, um, maybe 33. Okay, so I'm making this example number three. I would say this will really help with your algebraic skill. So keep on practicing. Um, so we have two times T plus one divided by T plus three. Okay. And we are going to find the derivative. Of course, we're gonna use the same formula we're gonna use the same formula if this limit exists, right? The limit exists. So what are we gonna do here is that f of a plus h, right? So let's, let's find out what is f of a and what is f of a plus h. So that's f of a, right? So this is a, c is replaced by a, right? a plus h, so a plus h. So everywhere t 
will be replaced by A plus H. Denominator P will be replaced by A plus H. Okay, so now when we apply the definition, we will get some expressions. Okay, F of A plus H is this piece. Right. If you like, if you like to write two a plus two h, that would be fine too. Okay. So I'm going to put it here. It's just a bunch of substitution, as you see. Right. F of a substitute f of a and h in the bottom. So I'm going to make the funds a bit larger so you can see better. And of course, at a price. Right. So we, we can only show so much on one screen. If you like to 2a plus 2h, so we can write 2a plus 2h, okay? That would do. And then what do we do? Well, we are going to simplify. We have two denominators, two significant denominators. So we're gonna multiply the top by that common denominator. Okay, that common denominator is that piece and that piece and the other piece, A plus three. So we're gonna multiply by one, anything times one stay the same. We're applying principle number one. And we're gonna do this so that we can reduce the complex fraction. Okay, so this piece, right? Multiply that piece multiply that piece. And this denominator, of course, is going to multiply H. Boom. Okay. And reduce. This piece will reduce with that piece. So the top on this piece is just going to be um, like that, okay, we'll come back to reduce it. A plus three will take away the A plus three, okay? Mm -hmm. And we don't need that one. And we can have uh, minus, uh, we can put this in the parentheses, right? That's A plus three. That is two A plus one, sorry, two A plus one, okay? And this piece, we can just bring it down to the front, there, okay? And next is gonna be foiling, okay? We're gonna foil. The purpose of foil this is to reduce it. It's to reduce the top, reduce the top. Because all along we have been having zero, approaching zero on the top and approaching zero in the bottom. And this algebraic, Endeavor hopefully can um, can simplify things, okay. And now, if you like, you can bring this up to the swatch paper to work it out. To work it out. To work it out, okay. So this piece, right, A times that, that's gonna be 2A squared, right? Plus 2AH, right? I'm taking A to times 2A times 2H and A times one plus A. And three times 2A, that's 6A. Three times 2H is just 6H. Three times one is three. And the other side is we have a subtracting. So 2a times a, that's 2a squared, but there's a minus sign in front of it. So here I have a minus 2a squared. I have them line up. And uh, 2a times h, that's going to be 2ah, 2ah but it's minus in front of it because there's a negative sign in front of it, okay? And then it's 2a times three. 
two a times three, that's six. That's a six a. Okay. So two a times a, two a times h, all oh, this is gonna be minus six a, right? Because two a times three is six a, there's a negative sign. So now one times a, one times h, one times three. So one times a, <clears throat> oh wait, this is six a, isn't it? Hmm. I shouldn't have an s, it must be a. Yeah, 6a, okay, 6a, so now I'm gonna do one times a, so that's minus a minus h minus three. You can see the entire process is grown to mistake, grown to mistake, reduced, reduced, and um, what else? Ne positive 6a, negative 6a. They're all gone. So all of these are gone. Okay. So I'm going to, um, these are gone. These are gone. And these two are gone. These two are gone. Positive three, negative three. And uh, these two makes five H, makes five H. So this equals to five H. Oh, nice. I, am, oh, I almost find it unbelievable. And of course, you want to double check. Okay, you want to double check. And I just want to be on the safe side. And I have the software. I can check it. Uh, simplify 5H. We got it right. We got it right. But anyway, um, we got it. We got it. Okay, you just have to be very careful. Okay. So now, all that work you've done is in the scratch paper. Actually, you don't need to show. If you show, make sure you show it right, okay? So the top is just a 5H. And H and H reduced, H and H reduced. So this H take away that H. So now, finally, we're out of the situation of zero divided by zero. We can do direct substitution, okay? So H is replaced by zero, so we can drop the limit by this time because we're using substitution, direct substitution. So in the end, we get five over A plus three, A plus three squared. So that is a derivative at A. So that was 33, right? The next one, I'm going to do a somewhat a more challenging one, which is number 36. You know, it would be great if you do it along my side. Okay, it would be really good practice. You've done this with, with, you know, along my side. It would be really helpful because it's really, really easy to get lost. It's really, really easy to get lost if you don't move, move along with, my, with the teacher. Okay, so f of x equals to four over root of one minus x. Okay, definition, the same definition. Okay, the same definition. Okay, and we got f of x here. Put it here. F of A. So this is replaced by A. Wait, why did I have S? A, right? How about F of A plus H? So A plus H replaces X. Be careful, you need a parenthesis. Okay. If you remove the parentheses, you will write my minus eight. Either way, either way, okay? So now we can substitute and deal with these concrete functions. You can see dealing with the concrete functions is actually quite a lot of work, 
Okay, so f of a, I'm gonna replace f of a. Divide by h. So once once again we encounter that situation of zero divided by zero, right? As h approaching zero, we get numerator approaching zero, denominator approaching zero. We have to do that whole thing all over again. And first we have to find common denominator. The common denominators are this piece multiply the other piece. Can you put them on the same roof? Yes, of course, um, you certainly can, but I, I will not. I will just leave them separate, okay? I just leave them separate. And so this piece is gonna multiply with that piece with the denominator, right? And that this piece is going to multiply each piece. As you as you're getting better, you can you know you can do this. Especially I'm recording this, so you could follow. Just rewind. So this piece reduce with that piece. So we have a four left, and that piece reduce with this piece. So we have only four left. Guess what? I can bring the four outside. I can bring the four outside. I can bring the four outside. So make my life a bit simpler, right? So four times, leave it outside. Now, what are we gonna do? Yes, conjugates. So the conjugate of the numerator the conjugate of the numerator is the subtraction turned into plus. Okay, so principle number one is used. Okay, and then what? Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So denominator multiplying, so we get that. And this piece times numerator times numerator, so we get a conjugate, the product of conjugate that equals to a squared, whoops, uh, a squared minus b squared. Okay. And uh, then just to simplify, be very careful, right? Because the, when we drop this piece, right? But when we drop the other piece, you really need to insert the parentheses. If you don't, you will have to, if you open the parentheses, you're gonna have minus one plus A plus H, okay? And now we are here. Okay, we are here. Minus one minus one a a these make zeros. And now we can bring the four up, right? So we can bring the four h up. So we can bring the four times h. Oops. We can do the four times h. And h and h reduced. Okay, finally, we are out of that situation of zero divided by zero. A direct substitution will apply. We're gonna replace H by zero, replace H by zero. So in the end, we have four over, right? We have a root one minus A times root one minus A, that's gonna be one minus A, Multiply, you can see in the square root, there's a two, two times root one minus a. Okay, so how do we write this down? Well, you can write it down as four over, four over two can be reduced. So this will be left with two. And in the denominator, if you like to be fancy, one minus a, raised to the power of three halves. 
okay? Because this is power one and this is power half, so that's three half. But if you like to stay the way it is, right? This two and uh, that denominator, if you like it this way, no problem, no problem, okay? So that's the end of that question. And I think this is long enough. And thank you for watching.